Hi guys, Brand here, and welcome to another commentary video. Today, I wanted to talk about something I told you I was going to talk about yesterday, and that was the idea of taking out outside feelings on Dead by Daylight. Because if you didn't watch yesterday's video, uh, where I talk about the fun streak, we are on a fun streak right now, which is a very TLDR for those of you who didn't watch yesterday's video. It's the idea that I'm trying to take away one real fun takeaway from each match of Dead by Daylight that I play. That way, each match kind of has a positive uh, spin to it. That way it doesn't feel like every match of Dead by Daylight is miserable because at least I did or had some sort of fun in that match. Something that I intentionally, through my, having a better mindset, um, try to take away something positive that makes that match overall a positive experience. Now, the reason that I bring this up uh, for today's video where we're talking about taking out outside feelings on Dead by Daylight is because I was having a discussion about the fun streak on my stream with uh, one of the people that watches me fairly frequently. And they were talking about how it would be impossible for them to do a fun streak uh, because of outside pressures of their life making it to where when they come into Dead by Daylight, it's impossible for them to make a small mindset adjustment. It's impossible for them to take fun out of the game if they have a lot of outside stressors uh, going into playing the video game. And I feel like there's a lot that goes into this. And obviously there's going to be, you know, the straightforward caveat. A lot of people will say, you know, well, you can't take your real life problems out on Dead by Daylight. And there's a lot of truth to that, but I kind of want to dive in further into that and do another aspect of it that kind of lends some credence to it, where I ultimately agree with the former, I do see a lot of the latter. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So I think Dead by Daylight, and this is going to sound really deep, but that's like, that's, we're a commentary channel, that's what we do. We commentate about the game and the way it works and that sort of thing. So that's what we do. Is I think in a lot of ways, Dead by Daylight is has a lot of like, the more frustrating aspects that real life has, Whenever I'm playing Dead by Daylight and a lot of bad things happen, I always think back to that one uh, Star Trek quote. Uh, the one where it's, it's possible to make no mistakes and lose. That's not failure, that is life. Like that quote, that I always think back to that because there's a lot of stuff in Dead by Daylight that can go wrong that inherently has nothing to, wrong to do with you. Like you didn't do anything incorrect. Things just went wrong because of a very, very super sided map to the other side. The other side just brought overwhelmingly strong perks or add-ons or items. And all of these things can contribute to even things as simple as like having a bug, like a major, a major game breaking bug happen or something that holds back your character or something as simple as like having a match where aim dressing is just doing its thing and you miss like two or three hits you were supposed to hit just because aim dressing is doing its thing. Like there's a lot just through the, the, the matter of the fact that Dead by Daylight is an asymmetrical game there's going to be an RNG factor that really does uh, screw you over. Remember, we talked about a while ago, we talked about the Ots Pyramid, uh, where Ots talked about all the things that make up uh, DBD strength, like things strength in DBD. Um, I obviously thought that resources, that being perks, items, etc., put was supposed to be at the top of the pyramid. But another aspect of that was also the RNG. And I think these two together, these two together, the resources and the RNG, are really what makes DBD kind of feel unfair and out of your hands sometimes. And that can be really frustrating. It, it could lead to you losing or not having a good time purely based on stuff that we really have no control over and can't really change. Which loops me back around to the, the, the quote that I brought up, uh, which is it's possible in life to make no mistakes and lose. That's not a, that's not unfairness. That's just life that you didn't do anything wrong. Life just does that. Is it kind of like vaguely reminds you of like real life situations? Well, I remember one of the times uh, that um, I was not brought back, like my contract ended with a, I used to be a teacher. For those of you who didn't know, uh, I had a contract end and instead of renewing it, they brought in someone else and it was really confusing because the entire time all the way up until um, they told me there was somebody else was taking over for me uh, or they were choosing to go with somebody else who had uh, more experience than me. They were telling me that like, oh, hey, well, you're one of the best young teachers we've ever had. You've done an exceptional job. You have some of the best you know, test scores out of everybody in your in your uh, forgot what it was called. It's like my little block. I don't know. It was essentially out of a group of teachers that was on my side of the building. Like they were praising me nonstop the entire time, all the way up until that point that they decided to just put someone else in my place. And, you know, there was a long time, there was a long time there that I like overanalyzed. I tried to figure out like, okay, were they just lying to me? Was I not actually doing a good job? Was I doing something wrong? And it came down to it that it was some sort of like weird, like union thing that they had to respect. And it was mostly just like a formal process that I didn't have much input in. And, you know, that was should have been 
a comfort, right? That should have been a comfort to me because it was like, oh, well, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. And that's why they didn't bring you back. But it actually kind of made me more irritated. <laughs> it kind of made me more mad. It's like, so you're telling me that I did a great job and it just didn't matter. <laughs> like it felt more frustrating to be in that situation. And I feel like life's sort like full of all sorts of those little situations like that, where like you don't do anything wrong and something just gets taken away from you that's really vital or you get punished even though you didn't really do anything wrong. And that, that feeling feels terrible. A feeling always feels terrible and it's an inherently and a very emotional and frustrating thing to go through and i feel like in a, in a very minor way and a very micro way not a macro way a micro way uh dead by daily does this a lot with its resources its rng there's tons of things that ended up that end up going wrong and have nothing to do with you i was playing survivor uh last friday for the open lobby uh which you're more than welcome to come join every friday um when i was doing the survivor open lobby on friday I, we got an ormond spawn <laughs> where you know the side with the little the little tiny ski logs like the, the little shack that goes all the way down the line into shack um <laughs> the, i got zero pallets all the way down <laughs> which is like the most unlucky spot i've ever had an ormond ever as survivor like literally zero pallets from that little bit like little ski shack all the way down to the actual shack zero pallets i was like how is this possible <laughs> And of course, that match didn't go too well because, well, there was no pallets on an entire side of the map, <laughs> which is, you know, that's just like we didn't we didn't have a bad time because, you know, we played badly. There was nothing to do over there. <laughs> so I don't know. There's just a lot of instances of, or dead by daylight kind of like very naturally, very naturally kind of emulates those aspects of life where sometimes stuff just goes wrong and there's nothing you can really do about it and nothing you really did wrong to deserve it. So it's kind of like easy to understand how people would get agitated uh, about like being put in kind of a similar situation where it's like, OK, well, you know, in my life, I'm getting upset and frustrated because unfair things are happening to me uh, that I have no control over, nor did I really do anything wrong to, you know, put those on me. But also if this this thing that's supposed to be my getaway, my free time is also doing it. Like, you know, it, it can obviously, you know, it can strike a nerve. It can hit a little raw. Um, but like I said at the beginning of this, I want to take that and like turn it to the flip side here. Kind of, you know, turn it on its head is like, that's the way the game is designed. That is the way the game is meant to happen. And just not like you don't know that going in, right? It's not like you don't understand that that's like the way Dead by Daylight is played. You watch it, you play it all the time. You know, that's how it's going to be. So... I, I, I don't it like it's like people walk in and you do they do the surprise Pikachu face. They're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I got bad RNG or oh, my God, I can't believe I got a four slow down skull merchant <laughs> camping and tunneling every every single hook. It's like it's possible. It's possible to happen. And, you know, that's a thing that can happen when you boot up the game. Like, you know, that's how the game is going to be possibly conducted. It could go very, very well for you, too. There'd be a lot of fun stuff, but you could also run into a lot of bad stuff, too. That's just kind of the nature of the game. And I think the main thing I want to hit here on the opposite side of things with this point is that just because things are going wrong or have gone wrong in your real life doesn't mean that Dead by Daylight is an emphasis of those things or are related to those things. Dead by Daylight is asymmetrical by nature because at least, you know, before the, like the last couple of years, Dead by Daylight was not really, Dead by Daylight really didn't care about the sweatier aspects of the game and trying to make things more consistent and trying to kind of like pander more to a uh, intense experience. But it, even even in its current form, which is probably the most like streamlined and sweatiest it's probably been in the game's history. Um, although that's kind of arguable because there used to be stronger stuff in the game. Anyways, that's a different video. But anyways, you, you know people play sweatier in this game overall is my point. Um, the game is still built on the foundation of mostly just a, a being a party game that got a little too sweaty. That, that is kind of like how it is built. It's kind of just doing its own thing. Just because something of an RG nature happens that like hurts you or like screws you over from winning the game does not mean it is a, an emulation of something that happened to you in real life. It's not like, oh, well now this is happening on top of this too. It's not one of those scenarios. It's not, it's not doubling up on it. You can't take out things that are happening in your real life on the game. There's a situation that happened to me personally. I know this video is already long. I'll try to wrap this up. <laughs> situation that happened to me personally a long time ago. I was playing Devil May Cry 1, uh, which is a very fun game, very underrated game. Uh, I played it when I was, uh, <clears throat> I played it when I was 13. 
It was a gift from the first girl I ever had very, very strong feelings for. It wasn't just like we were just dating for funsies. Like, I was like, hey, I actually really genuinely like this person. Um, she gifted it to me She uh, for, my, for my birthday. She gave me Devil May Cry 1, and I got partway through it. And then, you know, we had broken up at some point because we were 14, 13, 14. Uh, we had broken up in the middle of me trying to, you know, play and beat the game. And it hit me really hard because it was the first person I actually didn't want to actually have a breakup with. I was like, I actually kind of want to keep this one. And at that point onward, every because Devil May Cry 1 is a pretty hard game. Devil May Cry games are very, very fun, but they're often very, very difficult at the same time. Um, so every single like difficult boss I would run into, I would just I would just like react way more volatilely and frustratedly. I would rage a lot more at like all the bosses in the game uh, and all the hard parts of the game. Uh, because, you know, obviously there was something else going on. There was something beneath the surface there. It wasn't really, I was as mad at the boss design. Like, and I kept saying it too, because I was like, oh, it's the boss design so terrible. The enemies are too hard. They made the section too difficult. Like, I'm trying to turn it into something objective. But realistically, I'm just upset that I'm playing a game that a girl, you know, gifted me that I really cared about that left me. That's what I'm upset about. I'm not really like, the, the boss in the game is probably you know, and we'll get to that, <laughs> is probably fairly designed. I'm just having an emotional reaction because I, you know, something's happening outside of the game that's making it more emotional than it should be. And so I got to this one boss, and I don't, I don't remember what its name was. It's, if you guys have played Devil May Cry, it's the big sludge monster at the bottom. <laughs> that, that guy was really hard. Um, and I am just like quitting the game for like four years. I ended up quitting the game for like four years because I just couldn't do it. Like at that point, that was I couldn't get past that boss. Obviously, my emotions were more in it than were in any way supposed to be um uh, realistic or um and in any way like realistic or earned <laughs> in any way it wasn't a uh, valid response so i quit it for like four years i come back around uh when i'm 18 I, i'm like oh yeah i you know i find it i find the game all clean in one day i'm like i don't think i ever beat this i go in and i beat that boss like second try and i haven't even played the game in in four years i load up the game and i beat that boss second try Really, my second attempt, I beat him. And I was like, I thought this guy was impossible. I thought this guy was like, like a, literally I could not beat this guy and get past this game. And I ended up beating the game. And I ended up really, to this day, like I said, it's, I, I really love that game. It's very underrated. Um, that was the that was the key, right? As I was, I was going through a pretty rough breakup and that's what was on my brain the whole time. It really had nothing to do with that monster, that boss that I was facing. It had nothing to do with the game mechanics or how the game was designed. It had to do with my emotional response to what was happening outside the game that I tied to the game, that I, I injected those emotions into the game. When in reality, it was it was actually a really great and really fun game, and I just had to step away and separate life and game to be able to uh, actually enjoy and have fun with the video game. And I think a lot of DVD players do that. I think a lot of DVD players, be, uh, I was, like I mentioned before, because of the ASM nature, kind of mimicking kind of the, <laughs> the ASM nature of life, kind of screwing you over for no reason. Um, kind of like really get really emotional playing Dead by Daylight and kind of see it as a reflection of things happening in life and want to take out all their emotional struggles on Dead by Daylight. But I don't, I don't think you can do that. You got to You got to put that line there. You got to put that line there. You can't equate these things. And if you are, um, as they say in those like little fun crime dramas, you're, you're too close to the case. You're too close to the case, brother. You're a little bit too close. You're a little bit too close. You're a little bit too close to the case. Uh, you need to you need to back up a little bit. You need to back up a little bit and uh, analyze and process your thoughts and feelings because the game is not doing that to you. Life is doing that to you. And like with my situation, I guarantee if you back away and you come back, you're gonna be like, oh, oh, that was just me. That was my emotions. I wasn't that wasn't the game at all. So yeah, a little bit of food, uh, food for thought. I, I tried to cover both sides because I feel like there's a lot of credence. There's a there's a lot of truth to both takes on this. I do think it's under, like I said, I do think it's understandable that uh, people kind of do go to that place because, you know, life is kind of asymmetrical in nature and screws you over for no reason, just like Dead by Daylight does. <laughs> but also, you know, you got, you got to keep that line between game and life and realize when your emotions are projecting. That's the best word for it. Your emotion, you're projecting your emotions into something that probably doesn't require that level of energy. So, yeah, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that's a good, like, this is a very like lifestyle, emotional kind of like mental thing that we did today. Hopefully that helps your mindset. A lot of mindset videos lately. It's been on my brain lately. <laughs> but hopefully that's helpful. And uh, if you have somebody in your life that's kind of doing this, maybe you can pass that on to them and hopefully that helps them. But 
other than that, this has already been an incredibly long video, so thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate y'all for sticking by today. But I do upload daily, so I will see you tomorrow. But if I don't, I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.